Okay, so I'm uh, welcome to Forthright with I'm Sulani Madsen. I'm happy to have Senator Mike Patton with me today for a conversation, a, a little preview of the upcoming legislative session. Good to see you again, Mike. Oh, good to see you again, Sulani. And uh, yeah, the session will be here before we know it in early January. Uh, it's the shorter session this year, 60 days. As far as budgetary matters go, the three budgets, the capital budget, the uh, transportation budget, and the operating budget are supposed to be supplemental, more for emergencies or unexpected expenses than for straight out spending. However, there is uh, unexpected revenue that has come in from the capital gains income tax and from the uh, so-called tax and trade, which is caused our gas prices to go up close to 50 cents a gallon and has been a great economic development tool for the state of Idaho. Uh, but uh, so there'll be a debate over those things. Uh, what's what's going to happen? Uh, uh, given the uh, history with the Democrats, they're not going to return any of that money to the taxpayer, even though that's where they got it from. Uh, the best I could hope on some of the tax and trade money is that it could go uh, maybe as a source for uh, maintenance uh, uh, on our roads. And uh, we have a, have a problem with, with emergencies and everything that uh, they're not able in the budget to do the maintenance and preservation that's so necessary. So we could get a source for that. And that might be and the best. There's, yeah. There's a backlog. There's a backlog, I think, of transportation repairs that's been discussed at, right. at a bunch of different levels. So, yeah, that might be a good source for the. And it's gotten uh, uh, more of an emergency. I mean, there, there's, I understand there's a bridge up in Ferry County that's desperate and they don't really have the money to repair it, but they need to repair it, things like that, um, that, that are out there. So, yeah, that would be uh, be good on that. I mean, we had a great budget a couple of years ago that Senator Linda Wilson devised, who's the ranking Republican on the Senate Ways and Means, that would have given uh, property tax relief. We, we have folks now that are literally being taxed out of their homes, seniors that may have lived in their home uh, their whole lives. So this would have given uh, an exemption for everybody, the first $250,000 of the state property tax, it would have transferred money from the general fund to the transportation budget for the sales tax on automobiles and auto parts, and uh, would have uh, beefed up some of our law enforcement uh, uh, expenses to, to help out. We currently have the uh, smallest number of law enforcement per capita of any state in the nation. Now, some of that is starting to change. We got a wonderful new uh, sheriff's training center out on the West Plains that just had the dedication here a week or so ago uh, that uh, hopefully uh, will be uh, training not only uh, Spokane County people, but help with the backlog uh, throughout the state. We're going to more regional training centers, which is huge and rather than sending everybody over to Burien uh, mm -hmm. and stay, stay over there for three months, you know. So a number of things uh, going. Uh, there's these initiatives that you've probably heard of that are out there, and it'll be very interesting to see if they qualify and get enough signatures. If they do their initiatives to the legislature, and the legislature has to either adopt them outright unlikely given the makeup of the legislature or submit them to a vote of the people by themselves or submit them to a vote of the people with an alternative. So uh, we'll see if they qualify. Uh, there is an entrepreneur uh, that is put in, I believe, $4 million towards paying for signature gathering for some of these initiatives. One would outlaw the income tax once and for all, one would allow for uh, more crimes where law enforcement could actually pursue the criminals. Uh, probably the worst one out there is auto theft. So you, you can't, and not only do the number of cars being stolen going way up, but 
then they're uh, being used to commit other crimes. And you may be aware that on TikTok gave instructions basically on how to steal Kias and Hondas, and they've mm. been stolen and used in crimes. Uh, and the marijuana shops are a very attractive target because the federal banking laws uh, don't allow them to deposit money in banks, so they've got a lot of money in the stores, and uh, they've been uh, victims uh, of a lot of uh, robberies and and then more violent crime. So uh, we, we've got a lot we need to do. We lead the nation in drug overdoses. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, horrible. And, and the fentanyl is the key culprit in that, which we get from Mexico, originally coming from China. So uh, there's a lot of issues to deal with, and, uh, and hopefully uh, we can make some progress on some of them. But what what is going to be your uh, your key issue this year? Is there some particular bill that you want to introduce and really push through? Well, there's one that I did introduce that made it part of the way, and that's a habitual property offender. Uh, we have so many property crimes that are committed by a relatively small number mm -hmm. of serial repeat offenders. And so if the prosecutors say uh, for people that have seven priors or something, could seek an enhanced sentence and be approved uh, by the judge, uh, we could uh, improve things pretty dramatically if you get a few of these repeat offenders out of circulation. It helps, but we have stores that are putting more items under lock and key. Mm -hmm. um, there was uh, stores that are closing, uh, two Target stores closed over in Seattle. Uh, even here in Spokane, we had a Starbucks closed there at, I think, second or third in division. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, dangerous situation, especially uh, in the cities and including uh, downtown Spokane. Yeah. I was just uh, reading uh, today about a, a different bill. It's one that would look at putting a, democ a uh, called democracy vouchers program, like the one that Seattle has in place for the legislature. And I'm curious if you have uh, if you looked at that at all. It it got it didn't get out of committee last year, but it's it's potentially coming back this year. I'm just thinking with all this with the extra money. Do you, any any idea of how that might get received? I, I I don't know. I mean, I always have concerns when government gets directly involved in in financing things and uh, uh, what the impact has been. I haven't really studied the impact on the elections in 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 Seattle. Uh, but I don't know, using taxpayers' money to give the politicians to run their campaigns, I don't think would be all that popular in my district. That's that's probably a good read of your district. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I just uh, uh, was going to ask a little bit more about some of the other things that might come up in the supplemental budget or else follow the thread of, is there any chance of, of Senator Wilson's, Senator Linda Wilson's idea coming back of a, of a uh, rebate to taxpayers? Well, uh, we'll, we'll push it there. There might be, uh, I don't know. Uh, the climate doesn't always stay the same. So there, there may be some interest on some of the Democrats to do that. I know their position on some of the, uh, you know, defunding police type legislation that they put in in 21 has changed somewhat because of all the uh, crime and the impact uh, on our economy. We, I mean, we have people leaving uh, King County and Seattle. They're losing population for the first time in decades and decades. So those sort of things are having an impact and it may cause uh, people to rethink some things. But I had a town hall meeting with uh, Treasurer Bumgarner in my district here recently, and we had a number of people who wanted to see uh, the uh, exemption go up from the 40,000 uh, annual income where they didn't have to pay their, their property taxes to be increased. We had disabled people, senior people, people on fixed incomes where the inflation due to the increase in the gas tax and other things I and mean, that causes everything to go up at the grocery store from, you know, mm -hmm. eggs to bread. Uh, and, uh, and and that's impacting uh, some of these folks dramatically. 
Uh, and I, I hate to see them uh, forced out of their homes. Of course, the other thing that impacts them is uh, Treasurer Bumgarner pointed out is spending by local uh, school districts, fire districts, local government, and, and the state. All that contributes also to uh, increased uh, property taxes. So yeah, we'd like to see some relief. Other states, even Democrat controlled states, such as Oregon and Nevada have given some relief to the taxpayer. So that would be good. I uh, was fortunate enough to get some legislation through last time to reduce some of the regulations and costs for uh, condos. So for 12 units and two stories, it should reduce the cost 50 to 75,000. We might wanna tweak that bill a little bit to allow maybe another level for parking or something like that. But, uh, uh, and then uh, uh, there was another bill got through taking the sales tax off of high-end wheelchairs that ALS or uh, MS patients use. And uh, there may be a effort to look at other medical equipment where there's a tax on it, a sales tax to remove that. We're one of only three states that taxes any type any type of medical equipment. Only only three states do that? Yes. Yeah. So I like to get rid of it completely, but the fiscal hit sometimes is too hard. So if we can do a little something every session, uh, we have a better chance. And last session it was great. We had even had uh, Steve Gleason, the famous football player mm -hmm. who played at WSU and Gonzaga Prep and the New Orleans Saints, he sent in written testimony and other individuals. Uh, I mean, some of those uh, high-end wheelchairs can be thirty to $60,000. So, mm -hmm. you know, a sales tax of close to 9% is pretty significant. Yeah, there's a there's a whole lot of things that go along with that. I have a friend who was dealing with potentially needing to to go to a scooter, and it was going to require some remodeling at her house so that it would fit. Right. And uh, so far, she has not needed the scooter, but we were going to have to look at: do we do a GoFundMe? I mean, how do we pay to get the bathroom accessible and and get her a ramp up to the front door, right. uh, or even the back door? It was. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. There's some. Uh... Sometimes some people will donate that work and do that for them. Uh, uh, unrelated to my bill, I was contacted by a constituent who uh, they couldn't get the wheelchair repaired. The manufacturer gave them false information saying nobody in Spokane repaired it. We found somebody who did. The manufacturer felt so bad about giving false information. They gave this constituent a brand new wheelchair that cost 3000 bucks. So... It was a wonderful story, uh, kind of a feel-good story. And I went out and visited them, and the husband was a big on woodwork and had done a ramp for his wife and everything. So they were so thrilled. Uh, but it shows you there's still a lot of really good people out in the world that want to help their their neighbor and uh, be, uh, be positive. And, uh, you know, so... Uh, one other thing, I know this is a little off script, but I wanted to thank you for your column and the Spokes and Review where you actually printed uh, the prayer that, that Matt Shea oh. offered uh, and as if uh, something's wrong with the uh, praying, you know, was kind of the theme of some of the people involved. <laughs> but I'm glad you, you said it straight and showed what their actual prayer was, you know. Well, I, I appreciate that. I actually think I did that on the on the forthright Substack. I don't I don't remember if I put that into a, a column or not. Um, I think but, you did. I think you did. Uh, yeah. I it's just uh yeah prayer. Uh, pr anytime you're praying, you're you're stepping outside of being so focused on the the demands and the the evils in the world, and I think it's a positive right. experience. Yeah. Yeah, that's well, such that's, a good place. That's a, such a good place to come to a conclusion. I don't think I want to start off on some <laughs> other issue that's going to be just a big argument all, all, all legislative session. Great, great. Well, good. Well, good. So um, thanks for joining me, Mike. I hope to have some more conversations with legislators, uh, you and others throughout the session. Yeah, we'll look forward to it. Thanks so much. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.